hey guys welcome to my youtube channel and uh, in this video guys today we are going to learn about you know media access methods so there are lots of uh, and couple of methods available uh, for media access and what is the meaning of media access first of all i will tell you i hope this video will be informative since if you are looking for n plus certification then you should uh, go through my videos and you know you should make notes because these are very uh, important and very critical topics okay most of people will not teach you but yes if you are looking looking for examination then you should make a note because media access you can see this topic like what does it mean you will feel but yes it is very important you should understand uh, what is media access then methods so i hope you will enjoy this video and you will learn something from this so guys here first of all uh, let's try to understand uh, basic things see why it is important uh, for you to uh, know about it for example for human what is the, the what is the method see one human will speak and the other will listen that is simple that is the way of communication uh, communication for human beings so let me tell you communication method categories include transmission media access and signaling so it, it is it is a communication and uh, like communication method will have couple of things so these are the things and in this topic we will identify uh, the most common media access methods so here the same thing just as now i told you like human communication follow unwritten rules that help everyone involved here and be here yes see yes uh, there are certain unwritten rules also there uh, everybody can speak at a time okay uh, yes if you talk about the rules just just now i told you one person should speak and one person should listen so there is like uh, no proper uh, you can say rule to be followed by human beings uh, they can like multiple people can speak at a time and multiple people can listen so this is you can say unwritten rule now what happens in computers so computers on the network must also follow rules so that every node has a fair chance to communicate but we are talking about computers here computers and servers so they should follow certain rules according to those rules uh, like you know if one one computer is sending or transmitting any data then other should not disturb like that they should follow and yes there are a couple of rules in this as a network technician you need to understand these media access methods so that you can make sure that every node on your network follow the uh, same set of rules yes if you are a network administrator or uh, network technician then you should have idea about it definitely that is why i told you it is very important to know about the media access methods so guys let's let's try to understand here uh, you know what is media access ma method first of all so you can see that it it is a it is a combination of three word one is media media is nothing but uh, means by which data will be traveling like uh, traveling like buyer or cable okay very simple and access means taking taking uh, permission i should say access and method means how they are accessing okay so here only one node can transmit at a time the media access method determines whether or not a particular node can place data on the network at a given time so this method will define uh, like whether or not that particular node can place data on the network at a, at a given time now little more things media access methods fall into one of the two categories with contention based or competitive media access there uh, these are the two methods the nodes themselves negotiate for media access time so let me uh, take you a little further here so guys here you know let me uh, show you one example here this is an example okay so you can see here let me let me finish this one first with controlled or determ uh, deterministic media access some centralized device or system controls when and for how long each node can transmit so you can see here this is a centralized device okay and now we are talking about which one uh, with controlled or deterministic media access 
so you can say central device determines access for example uh, this pc wants to access this media for how long it should access that will be controlled by this central device i hope it is very clear and how much data it can transmit how long it can transmit it will be taken care by this device okay and you can see this side like uh, contending for access so now this this device is uh, utilizing it but uh, it will also check which device is ready to uh, access media for example these two device more want to send data so these are containing uh, contending for access and this device is having access so it is done by this uh, central device okay and uh, what it is actually controlled or deterministic media access now i will tell you a little more thing about it next one is let's let's compare uh, you know media access methods so guys here uh, what we show just now is like controlled or deterministic where you have one central device and i told you it will uh, like you know central device or system controls when and for how long a node can how long means this computer can have access or can transmit uh, data now we will see here uh, difference uh, there will be two methods so we will see one by one so guys here deterministic access method are beneficial okay when network access is time critical how it is for example in an industrial setting key piece of control and safety equipment such as flow uh, set of sensors and chemical storage uh, facilities must be guaranteed transmission time and deterministic systems ensure that a signal uh, sorry uh, ensures that the single single node can't saturate the media all nodes get a chance to send data so <clears throat> let me take you back once again what happens for example you have once again we, we are in a in a situation where we have like you know something is required to be happen on time so that is known as deterministic access so we can enable that kind of configuration that kind of settings so in that condition what will happen this one pc will not have ownership to transmit data all the time okay so once its uh, transmission is over other pc will be uh, taking <coughs> access that is the concept of this uh, deterministic media access now i will tell you one more here okay however they require additional hardware for this kind of configuration we need to install some additional hardware and administrative time to configure and maintain but we have one more system here just like uh, deterministic that is known as contention based system so what happens here you know contention based systems are much simpler to set up and administer but timely media access is not guaranteed to any node just like this uh, for example if i tell you about this uh, deterministic uh, media access so here there will be a specific time after this much time some some other uh, node will take access or uh, he will be uh, transmitting data so this guarantee is there but if we talk about contention based uh, uh, media access if you are using so there is no guarantee okay like uh, uh, like you can see here but timely media access is not guaranteed to any node so here no guarantee like uh, uh, which uh, after, after that after a certain time which media will be accessing that that uh, i mean which node will be accessing media so yes uh, this uh, uh, this one it, it is totally depend on the requirement see i told you examples if you are working or uh, something is happening uh, like industry industrial setting okay and uh, there you need uh, uh, this kind of so you can deploy but uh, it is uh, it is totally depend on the business requirement so i told you these are the industry where this kind of uh, media access will be implemented basically it can be like chemical storage facilities and all and yes it is it is very good because it will save lots of things wastage so guys we will see now next that is a multiplexed media access okay uh, i hope i have taken this as a topic only here yes 
what is multiplexed media access okay we will understand about it so guys now uh, it is also a very important uh, topic here and uh, let me tell you so multiplexing is a controlled media access method in which a central device combines the signals from multiple nodes and transmit the combined signal across the medium i hope this is a very simple definition of multiplexed media access so let me give you some more idea about it okay signals can be multiplexed using uh, time division multiplexing that is also known as tdm or frequency division multiplexing that is also known as fdm and both relay on the central device called multiplexer or mux to manage the process so here let me show you one example this is an example of uh, multiplexing so here we have one one device this is a central device okay and this is known as mux and you have three computers so this device will receive all the signals from all computers if you have four and five it will receive here and then it will place in a sequence and then transmit over this media in sequence only that is the concept of multiplexing so this device is known as multiplexer okay or central device so guys i'm sure you should not have any confusion here and i told you here one thing uh, signals can be multiplexed using time division multiplexing or frequency division multiplexing so let's try to understand about what is tdm or fdm okay so here first we will understand what is tdm time division multiplexing so what happened here so guys with tdm each sender is given exclusive access to the media a medium for a specific period of time so here each node for a specific time every node will have access of media nodes have exclusive access to the connection between themselves and the mux the mux combines each node signal in turn sending the resulting combined signal over the primary network media i hope it is very clear so once again they will have full access between this and this between this multiplexer and uh, node uh, this media we are talking about and it will combine and then send over this primary network media so here every uh, like you know each sender is given uh, exclusive access of media okay for for a specific time now we'll see what is happening fdm since it is a time division so if they are getting uh, you know time here a specific time now we will see fdm here what happens so guys now with fdm data from multiple nodes is sent over multiple frequencies or channel over the network media media medium sorry and nodes have exclusive access to the connection between themselves and mux the mux put each node's signal onto its own channel so here it will have own channel okay and sending the resulting combined signal over a primary media medium so here if you are talking about uh, you know frequency then definitely channel will come into part or it will play a role so again just like here it will receive signal and uh, combine it and then transfer over this uh, primary media so here it will be receiving frequencies this is the difference between tdm and fdm so here signals coming and uh, they are getting access uh, basically okay uh, for a specific time and here uh, they are sending multiple frequencies so guys i hope this is very clear uh, you, once again i will tell you fdm data from multiple nodes is sent over multiple frequencies or channels so it will they will create one channel here okay between this and this and after receiving all the uh, you know frequencies or uh, this data uh, it will have one channel here also and then it will arrange it will combine and then send or then transmit over the primary network so guys here this video is concluded i hope it will be informative and please guys help me i need your help uh you know you subscribe my channel and if you have any doubts just put me 
or let me know in comment box because I need your help a lot. I'm struggling a little and I will meet you in next video with some other new topic of N plus certification. Till then bye bye.